Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization VI. I think our goal this episode is to actually win the culture victory. And in order to make that happen, I think building national parks is a great way to get there. And we have a really nice little national park here that we can nestle in to Eretium. This episode, we're going to be mostly covering the industrial era and what you should be doing in the industrial era. So, we are going to be working on that exact thing. I think I'm going to go ahead and potentially look to get a national park over here as well. Um, and the cool thing about national parks is they're just they're just great sources of tourism. They make your empire happy. You get a lot of value out of them. I'll explain a little bit about how national parks work once we get there. But otherwise, I'm just trying to generally improve my tiles, make my empire a little bit more effective, send trade routes to my capital, build my Renaissance walls. Once we finish research and conservation, we will see a huge bump in the tourism of our empire. And then the next big bump in tourism from our empire will be coming from flight. Uh, let's go ahead and keep purchasing builders because we need a lot of builders at this phase of the game. And we want to get them really efficiently. I think it would also be okay if I kind of deforested this area for Moais a little. Um, so I think that's what I might do. Do a little deforestation. This will also finish the Forbidden City, giving us plus one wildcard policy slot, which is insane. A wildcard policy slot, by the way, is ridiculously good because you could put literally anything in here. We could put frescoes and get insane amount of great artist points. We could put um, settler production, campus adjacency, holy site adjacency. Wonder production is amazing. We're building a lot of wonders, so a 15% wonder production boost. That's actually really decent. Uh, do we want to continue to build wonders? I think we do, although we would like to get the theater square in here because it's a really nice theater square. And don't forget, this wonder is also producing three tourists per turn and that will only scale up as the game goes on we managed to chop out the renaissance walls in here let's continue to do a little bit of repairs uh, we definitely want to like i think moais are the name of the game down here in the south this land has already been heavily deforested so clearing out what little bit of forest remains and then just planting down moais on every single tile down here really appeals to me as a strategy and so that's what we're going to be doing i am waiting for the kill to be finished up here with so many builders um, and we're also excited about the potential to clear this barb camp pretty soon. I'm going to hang out here waiting for the inevitable conservation civic. Little catastrophic eruption down here, not the end of the world. Yeah, Moai's down here would be amazing. We've got the amphitheater in Nidoros. I think the next thing to go for would be maybe the art museum. Um, get a well, I want to have at least three art museums, I think. Uh, looking at Karlstad, we just finished the Renaissance walls, which will give us a little bit of tourism once we have conservation. I think the natural thing to do in here is honestly just to get builders. It's going to be the way that we get the best return on investment. Let's go ahead and make a carpet of Moais over here as well. I'll send a builder to go retool this landscape and we'll continue to faith purchase builders. Um, now, I could faith purchase builders in every single city at the exact same time. Totally a viable thing to do. There's a reason I'm not doing that because I want efficient builders. I want builders over time. I'm trying to maximize my efficiency, not try to maximize the amount of builders that I get right now because I don't need all of my builders right now. I need them over the next period of time. We finished Mont Saint Michel, another wonder that'll slowly generate us a little bit of uh, tourism per turn. That's fantastic. Again, another four tourism per turn. We're just adding these little chunks of tourism every single turn that passes. And we can even add more. We could get the Hermitage, we could get Taj Mahal. Um, I think in this city we'll go for builders. I think that seems like a reasonable thing to do. We want to clear this. Let's clear this as well. Um, down here in Stockholm. Let's keep repairing tiles. I think that's the appropriate thing to do. We'll have it. We just want to clear the land down here mostly. That's mostly what we want to be doing. Over here, I don't think clearing the land makes a whole lot of sense. So we'll just leave it as is. Uh, we'll help out with the m -m 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 Jason Momoais. I'm really excited at getting industrialization and conservation. Industrialization and conservation are really keystone techs. We have a builder up here in the north. I think Orumki could use a little bit of productive tile, so I would like to get a couple of extra mines. Art museums are fantastic. I think, again, I would like to get three art museums in a perfect world. We'll do a little chop here that'll finish that builder for us, and then we can start looking into moaing up this whole zone. Chop, chop, chop. Chop, chop, chop. We got the archaeological museum in the capital. We could get the archaeologist with faith, but I think the capital could build it fast enough. But the capital is kind of busy with other stuff. So I think I am going to faith buy an archaeologist in here. I do want to make sure I keep buying builders with faith too. We're making 70 faith per turn, by the way, which is insane. Um, and we can faith buy archaeologists because we're in a monumentality golden age. This is a fact that I only discovered a couple of years ago. Or well, uh, maybe like a year ago. It was insane. I'm playing the game for a very long time and I never knew. Uh, let's finish the harbor because that will actually massively improve all of our internal trade routes, giving them all plus one production because the harbor is a district that provides plus one production to your internal domestic trade routes. So 
that is why we're going to do that. Um, it'll also give the city potentially an extra uh, trade route too. All right, we're just we're prepping the land for the mass um, the mass moai that's coming down here. You, my little builder, need to get on the productive tiles. You're healing up. Awesome. All right, plus two error score on that. That's giga chat. Uh, we did just finish industrialization, which is amazing. So the plus one production to mines as well as access to coal and the ability to build factories and all that stuff is huge. We have managed to find a source of coal over here. We found a source of coal over here and we found a source of coal over here. Awesome. That's so much beautiful, beautiful coal. A fantastic outcome. We're also super close to conservation. We can start to work on that. Um, let's get military science. Uh, the reason we want military science is because we would like to go for the Eiffel Tower. Um, if we could get to the Eiffel Tower in a reasonable amount of turn, what it does is it gives plus two appeal to all tiles in your in your civilization, which is amazing for national parks. Just amazing for national parks. Okay, we will go here. We will break this. We will put a... Well, I will harvest this. I will put a moai there. You can come down this way. You will put a moai there. And we're just going to carpet in as many moais into this little area as we can because it'll be a great way for us to turn what is relatively unproductive flat land into productive moai tiles. And we're going to be doing this across our empire now. Um, and basically, once we have steel, we'll probably beeline flight as our next goal. In fact, it might even be worth it for me to go for flight before steel. And I think it would be because we want that extra tourism. So I think we're going to go scientific theory into flight to get that juicy, juicy tourism to bring us up to speed. Let's go ahead and start capturing some of these uh, artifacts. It's going to be a fun time with our archaeologists. I need to break this spice tile. Why are there bad guys down here that I'm not aware of? I need to start moving troops over. The bad guys are in position. I have no, I have no units that can respond. I think I'll buy my own skirmisher to help fight off this barb camp. A small expenditure of gold, but well worth it. And then we can start painting in the, mo the moais in here. Don't forget to faith buy the builder. Ooh, do you know what I could faith buy actually? I could faith buy a Nihang to help deal with this. Awesome. Kilwa Kisawani is finished. Now this is um, arguably the most important wonder for you to understand how it works in the game. Reading the text does not make sense the first few times you read through it, but it's actually incredibly simple, okay? When you finish the Kilwa, you will get three envoys. Those three envoys, very easy to use. All you got to do is, we also finished conservation, by the way, we're up to 185 tourism per turn. All you got to do is put those uh, envoys into city-states. Like, for example, here, uh, let's take Susan to your view, and we'll take Susan to your view. Boom. Watch my science, by the way, 161 signs. Click, click. 169 signs. Watch my science when I take the final two envoys into Anshan, Watch it, watch it, boom, 200 science. What the hell just happened? Kilwa Kisawani just happened. So the basic way that this wonder works is when you are suzerain of a city-state, you will get a 15% boost to that city-state's yield in the city that Kilwa Kisawani is in, okay? So that means Karakorum is getting a 15% boost to its science because I am suzerain of Taruga, okay? However, the real bonus kicks in when you get two city-states of the same type under your belt because it'll get you a 15% science boost across your entire empire when you control two city-states of the same type. Now, I just want you to imagine, not only am I scaling from the science that the city-state itself is providing me, now I'm pr scaling off the Kilwa. The Kilwa is easily one of the most important wonders in the entire game for you to master. It's incredibly important that you understand how it works and quite literally, uh, out of all of the wonders in the game, okay, I'm going to tell you what the wonders in the game that you should be trying to build in every single game. The pyramids, the Colosseum, the Kilwa, the mausoleum. Those four wonders completely change how you play. Those are super, super important. You don't have to get them, but if you can get them, they really help. That's the thing, right? You don't need them, but if you can get them, they're super, super, super good. Like, it's hard for me to even really explain how good they are. Now, when it comes to a tourism victory, the Crystal Red and Tor is quite a good wonder to get as well, too, because it increases the tourism that you get from seaside resorts, as well as reducing the amount of tourism you lose when it comes to um, religious, civic tourism or whatever. So, but, it, you know, it's... It, not necessary. The Crystal Red and Tor comes into play on Emperor difficulty and up. We're currently playing on Prince, which is two difficulty notches below Emperor. We're going to go ahead and get to work on mass media because we want the governor title and it'll also lead to ideology, which is an important mid to late game technology. We've kind of decoupled from like how to play each era. 
a little bit and we don't actually need to defend our harbor so i'm going to send this caravel on an exploration mission but you know you should have a couple of harbors you should have a couple of things get, get it all together the way that you want it to uh let's go ahead and grab the theater square in the city of lugdunum uh in setia we have the theater square we'll go for the amphitheater and in karakorum we got the kilwa do we want to go for another one we could go for another not we could go for another wonder it's not a terrible move I think I'll just grab a builder and a spy in here. I think that's fine. Also, this city just has like insane production and I don't really know how or why. Oh, I guess we have Auckland. Oh yeah, Auckland is providing me crazy coastal production. I totally forgot how good Auckland is. It gives you plus two production on coastal water, which is insane. Theater, where, theater square completed in Sarpsborg. We quickly go for the amphitheater. Uh, we'll go ahead and move this knee hangover to try to clear this out. And uh, we're just generally moving military to try to be a little bit more active in defending my empire from barbarians. Let's keep on getting these delicious, delicious Moai tiles. Um, there's a huge carpet of Moai going on down here. We also need to make sure that we're always buying builders. Uh, we can now build naturalists. So I'm going to faith buy a naturalist here. I will be clearing this tile and then faith buying a naturalist here. Two national parks. I think we'll be faith buying a naturalist here. Uh, not can't quite afford it. This is a place where you could argue that I should have gone for theocracy because it gives a 15% discount to purchases with faith. Not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. Um, and I'm probably gonna have to stop buying builders with faith now to turn them into naturalists and things like that, at least for a short period of time. Um, so let me have a look at the appeal here and think about where national parkage could go. You know, this land is just really low appeal. Really, 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 really low appeal. So I'm just gonna try to claim it and see what we can do with it. I'm not going to worry about efficiently claiming it or doing anything else like that. It says, can we claim it and what can we do? A little bit of an eruption down here. Very nice. It's going to be good for the Moais. We did manage to get Isaac Newton, who instantly builds a university and library and gives plus two science to all universities, which is a great benefit. Uh, you're going to step in here. I'm going to create the national park. I get plus four error score. And now this tile provide 16 tourism per turn. That is a huge amount of tourism, right? Consider that Renaissance walls give you, what was it, uh, six tourism per turn? That's a huge amount of tourism. Also, you can plant forests in national parks that have already been built. You do not have to build them before. You can plant them in national parks and it will give you a slight boost to the tourism output. Very, very slight, barely perceptible, still worth doing in my opinion. Uh, let's go ahead and gold purchase my builders. That's what we're going to be focusing on. And we're also focusing on our amphitheaters because we want to get those great works of writing ASAP. Looks like one of my commercial hubs was destroyed. So one of my traders has been sent to the Gulag. And we will go ahead and clear that. I meant that in like the, the Call of Duty version of the Gulag. Boom, boom, boom. We're getting a very nice... Now, I want you to imagine all of this culture here being turned into delicious, delicious tourism. It is going to happen. Uh, instantly builds a yeah i don't really care where we use isaac newton i just want to get him down um get him down and partying figuring things out another barb camp has appeared we shall try to clear it let's go ahead and grab this artifact this will boost combustion we get to choose the artifact there is a strategy to choosing the artifacts i'm not going to tell you it because it's not important when you're playing on prince difficulty it's not important to winning you don't need to do it you only need to tailor your ability to play the game to the level of the difficulty that you're playing on so don't just don't worry about it man like seriously I think people way over optimize for lower difficulties. Just have a good time. Like I'm not even really trying here. I'm just like floating. You know what I mean? I'm going to win the game in like 13 turns and I'm floating, man. We're on the float. We're drifting. Uh, we're the drift king. Let's go ahead and get the great artist. That great artist will be, um, he actually can't put any great works down yet because I don't actually have an art museum, but I will have one next turn in Nidoros. So I'm going to move him to Nidoros. Archaeological museum has been completed here. We're going to hard build the archaeologist. I would like to, I would prefer, prefer to buy them, but hard building is fine. We've got the Renaissance walls here in Vastaras. I think most of my cities are now finishing up their walls, so I can probably take out the wall production card. Um, let's go and, oh, we need to chop this. Then we need to plant that. We need to chop this. Then we need to go here. Let's go ahead and buy that tile. We need to keep this Moai train going. We're going to completely deforest our empire for the purpose of, well, for the purpose of making tourism. That's what we care about. Alrighty then, the Moai train is well underway down the south. This is where the majority of my builders are going to be sent, is down south now. Um, I've got a huge number of builder charges around here that I can turn all this into Moai, but I want to send some down south now so I can start building that up because we're only seven turns away from flight. Where else am I going to do the Moai thing? Moai, Moai. Well, definitely Putioli could be a good Moai city. City has nothing else going for it. Ah, we're up against pikemen. Now, we could potentially do something about these pikemen. 
Um, I think if we get all three of these guys to attack at the same time, there could be something to happen there. Um, why don't you go and collect some of these beautiful artifacts? Let's renew that mission. Opera and ballet has been considered. Okay, awesome. We got the harbor here in Rome. Uh, let's go ahead and get the lighthouse. Although what we really need is a caravel to kind of push this galley away. Um, and to that end, I'll move an archer up into that city to help with that. Uh, we got the art museum in Nidoros. So we can start creating sculptures. Nidoros also has the potential to make a little bit of extra tourism if we wanted to. Uh, I think I'll build an entertainment complex here. And try to get the amenities up a little bit. Uh, we could also build a temple of Artemis. That's kind of a fun idea. Let's do it. A very slight amount of tourism per turn for four turns of production. I'll do it. It seems totally viable to me. Moai right there. Um, I want you to go to that tile and to chop it. And then I want you to go to that tile and chop it. And then I want you to go here. Plant Moai like crazy. Go here. Break. We're going Moai mad, boys. We're going absolutely hog wild on Moais. Let's also get another naturalist because we want to build another national park. The formation has to be four tiles, all owned by the same city with at least two appeal. Okay, capiche? Don't even ask me anymore. Now remember, Moai get extra adjacency for being adjacent to more Moai. So the bigger the carpet of Moai that you can make, the better that you benefit from it. It is true power in the palm of my hand to make the Moai. All right, let's attack once, let's attack twice, let's attack thrice, and that should clear this Pikeman Barbarian encampment, thus making our lives a little bit easier. Okay, so mostly again, I, I, I'm not talking you through every single little decision that I make, because a lot of them are a little bit repetitive. Um, I'm basically doing the same thing over and over. I'm planting woods next to my national parks, and I'm planting Moai next to my Moai. Beyond that, we have no other plants. Uh, because we should be on the verge of victory. Yeah, we're at 7 out of 44. We should see a significant jump at mass production. Naturalist steps up. He's ready to make that national park for us. We got a granary in North Shopping. Um, let's keep going. M -m 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 Jason Momoai. Let's extract this artifact, which will get us a clock. Excellent. Keep moaiing up. We're moaiing the lawn, if you know what I'm moaiing. Okay, that joke is getting old. <laughs> It's getting my mold. <laughs> so important thing to note about great artists is generally speaking, you actually want to not put all of your great artists, great works in the same city. And that's for a very simple reason. The first great work of art gets full yield. You get the three culture and the two tourism. If the great works of art in that museum are from the same artist, you will get much less yield. So you can see this one is only producing one culture, one tourism per turn when it's authored by an artist who already has an art dis displayed here. Very important piece of like gameplay understanding that you need to have. So I think things are going relatively well for me. I'm feeling very, very happy with the situation of the game. We're just basically we're we're just preparing for like when flight triggers, we're just going to completely annihilate the game. Um, in all honesty, I would be surprised if the game lasts much longer than like two to three turns after flight. Uh, we did just get mass media. Doesn't matter. We're on the train. We're on, we're on the gravy train to winning. We got the amphitheater in here. Honestly, I should just be building builders everywhere because it's the most efficient way for me to get tourism. I'm going to recruit Reina. Sorry. Yes, Reina, because she is the last governor that I need to unlock to get error score. I'm just going to park her in a city with a harbor like. Did you ever build a harbor? No, you didn't. Let's see, Harbor City, Harbor City, Harbor City. Nidoros has a harbor. I'll plonk you there. Um, let's go ahead and build the National Park. That's another nice chunk, a little bit of tourism. Let's have a look. We're winning in 18 turns. We'll be able to speed that up. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Let's keep on extracting and harvesting and breaking and harvesting and extracting, breaking, harvesting the whole nine yards. Go ahead and extract that for me. Yes, Moais. Mo -mo 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 we got the amphitheater and Eretium. Why don't you just go ahead and build me builders? It's the only thing that really matters to me now. I've just decided it's all I care about. I'll put in propaganda because I don't care. Well, conscription is fine. It'll save me money. I also don't need limes anymore. Limes, some might call it. Uh, and I think I will just take logistics to be able to move builders around my empire faster. That plus one movement if they start in friendly territory is quite useful because builders quite literally always start in friendly territory. Unless you stole it, of course, you sneaky little sausage. I see you. Little, little stealers of builders at various wares. Uh, we gotta keep we gotta keep the land getting cleared. The Moai train is not a Goai train. It does not go away. Dread it, run from it. You cannot escape the Moai train. Destiny always arrives. 
Now again, I think it's important to note, right? If you're a new player at this phase of the game, you have one. I'm making 420 culture per turn, giggity, uh, which is way more than necessary in order to win the game. Uh, I'm so far and away beyond what the AI is capable of doing in this Prince difficulty game. And I think this should be a really good learning experience if you're playing on Prince, right? If you're wondering how should my game look like around turn 200, this is what it should look like. It should look like you're winning. We have finished the Temple of Artemis. We will go for the Great Lighthouse because we're just we're just trying to squeeze out a little bit of extra tourism. Uh, let's see here, Romeo and Juliet. There we go. Uh, we will put you over here. The putting the same great work from the same author in the same building does not apply to great writers. It only applies to great artists. Important distinction that you need to make. Um, the one thing I really like about the Moai strategy is you basically cripple your empire to win the game once you have flight because my empire will be completely useless once I convert it to Moai's, which I'm pretty sure is basically the story of Easter Island. <laughs> At least the popular culture version of the story. I don't actually know. I'm not an anthropologicalist. Okay. I don't know how, I don't know what, I don't know what really happened in the world. I just know stories, okay? Stuff that people told me to make me feel good or intelligent. All right, who knows what really happened? Maybe they built those statues to appease an alien race and that actually by building them, they saved humanity. How how dare you judge them, okay? Saying they had hubris or something, okay? You don't know what they knew. They could have known something that changed the world, okay? Now, it's highly improbable and it almost certainly didn't happen, but you don't know that you, you know? You don't know that. You can't be sure. Let's chop this, place a Moai, chop here. Oh, guess what? We're placing a Moai. We can't, we can place another Moai. Oh, what's this? That's a Moai. Damn right, you bet, best bet. Chop that, that's a Moai. We just got Moai'd. <laughs> he just got meatballed. <laughs> God, I love the office. Uh, let's keep chopping. We are going hardcore, dude. We have access to flight. Now, this is really, really important. Receive tourism on all improvements that provide culture. Amount of tourism generated is equal to the to the improvements culture output. So if I go back here and I look at look at all these Moai tiles, dude. Seven tourism per turn, six tourism per turn, six tourism, four tourism, three tourism, two tourism. All of this tourism. And with these builder actions, I can continue to extend that. I can make it bigger, better, harder, faster, more powerful, stronger. I can put it in its element. In a way, I have become Death, the destroyer of Blurlds. A little Poopenheimer reference for, for the boys. We got a caravel in the capital, but we ended up not needing it. So I'm just going to go ahead and get the lighthouse so that we can get an extra trade route because we just care. That's what we care about. Let's go ahead and grab the amphitheater. That's our boy right there. What up? It's your boy, Potato McWhiskey. I'm here to teach you how to win a culture victory. And in Prince difficulty, all right, listen, we're making 400 tourism per turn. This is over, okay? This game is over, okay? We're making 10 times as much culture as these boys are making. They ain't going to do nothing. It's done for them. They, they're not going to do nothing. They'll do nothing. I'll tell you that much now. They'll do nothing. We'll harvest that. We'll kill there. We'll go there. You modify. Okay. Oh, no. Can't put you there. Pop you back this way. Um, I suppose what I could do is I could level you up and then eat your soul, make a big caravel, uh, and then I'll continue to faith by builders. Whilst we chop our way through our empire to break the tiles that once supplied us with every week, everything we needed, and now we forsake them and turn them into Moais. But alas, it is the correct play. It is the play that will win us the game. We sacrifice our empire to turn it into a giant Easter Island statue. Okay, the lighthouse has been completed. Let's go ahead and get to work on the shipyard. Um, I could also just go for builders in here. Why not? I mean, there's no reason not to build builders at this point. It is just the thing that will help me win the game. Uh, let's go here, chop that, you harvest that. We've got a little bit of work to do. Uh, go ahead and trade Rome. You come here, Moai. You, Moai. I remember every single Moai that's adjacent to another Moai just like makes Moai even better. I feel like I'm Homer Simpson, like in that episode where he's like, Mo, Mo. Mo ma mi ma, mo mi ma mo, mo mi ma mo. Uh, we got the art museum in Sarpsborg. So we can start to move great works of art there. <laughs> it's not necessary. It's not important. It's just something we can do. All righty. We have access to this. Let's go ahead and plug in military research. That'll get us plus two science per city because we did build 
um, military. Cap- we built Renaissance walls in nearly every city. So that's plus two city, plus two signs per city in our empire. Basically, curious. Chop here. Uh, harvest here. Harvest here. Oh, a little bit of a misclick on my part. Um, let's see, where were we? We were over here, and we were just cleaning house to prepare for the Moai wave. We're cleaning up like a locust. Spreading our builder influence across the land to get as many Jason Momoais as possible. Let's keep on harvesting. That'll get us another builder. Hey, that's fantastic. Is there a forest on this tile? No, not as far as I can tell. I'll give it a little repair. Repairing is free, by the way. It doesn't actually cost you builder charges. It just take, take, takes a builder action, i.e. like the builder has to move there and you have to click it. Okay, let's go ahead and chop this feature. Chop this feature. Remove the banana. Plant the Moai. Plant the Moai. Plant the Moai. Chop here. Chop here. Um, need to keep this builder thing. Now, every time we get a builder, our future builders get more expensive. So this is becoming less efficient as time goes on, but we are like generating an absolutely absurd amount of tourism. I know it says 31 turns, which seems like it's actually more than it has, but like that timer thing is just broken. Um, it just fundamentally does not work. Um, I just want you to know that. Um, that is something that you should know. We're up to 477 tourism per turn, which is starting to look really, really nice. Um, that should go up to about 500-ish maybe next turn. We'll see. It, it should be increasing at like a pretty decent clip, especially like when we're getting things like Great Lighthouse. And the Moais just keep on go Um Let's go ahead and clear you. A Moai there. Moai for you. Moai for me. Let's have a Moai. I'll have one too. Moai for you. Moai for me. Builder. Make sure our builders are in position to do the things that we want them to do. Oh, look at those Moai yields, man. Oh. Oh. oh, oh, oh. I'll recruit that great admiral. I don't have a use for him. Gain a free copy of a luxury. I'll get those whales. Uh, how would you like to build me a great library? Or builders. Why not builders? All we need to get that tourism up. It's a very strange game when you have access to M Rapa Nui because it completely changes how you interact with a tourism victory. But it does it in like a really fun and unique way, which is part of the reason why I like things like Rapa Nui because they, I really like things that either break or change the way that you play a game. I think they fundamentally just make a game more interesting and they make a game more fun. Is if you have an established set of rules and then some character or ability that lets you break those rules in a very specific and interesting way. We're going to go for democracy here. The short version of the story is democracy is just typically the best government for a tourism victory. And the simple way to answer that is there's a lot of complicated and interesting reasons that we could talk about why democracy is the best one for a tourism victory. But the simplest way to answer it is that it has a lot of economic and wild policy slots and economic and wild policy slots. A lot of the cards for tourism fit in those slots, right? You have heritage tourism here, economic policy card. You have satellite broadcast, economic policy card. Um, you have d d d social media, economic policy card. It's a tourism card. So just democracy is good for tourism because it's economic and wildcard based, which is very heavily pushing towards tourism based gameplay. I uh, generally wouldn't recommend fascism if you're going for a tourism victory. I would consider that suboptimal. Yeah, I would consider fascism to be suboptimal if you're going for some kind of culture victory. That would be my analysis. Let's go ahead and chop here. Oh, nice. Very nice. We got the 20 population in the capital. Come here. Moai. Moai. Um, right. Moai. Moai. And a little Goai with the Moai. We love the Moai here. So I think we've mostly Moai'd up the northern half of my empire. Let's start sending some builders down south, which is what I did with your mom. Oh, yeah. Not your mom, kiddo. Uh, we're going to go here. Go there. Chop. Moai. Very nice. Uh, let's go there. Drop the Moai. Drop that there. Um, we'll go here. We'll chop that. We'll go to Karlstad. We'll break that. Click. We're making it. Um, boom. Beatis. Anywhere we can't build Moai, we'll just pop down a Beatie. Why not? It's a very, very slight increase in tourism. Harvest. Don't forget, Moais are also really good on the coastline. Uh, and volcanic volcanic soil. So we also totally want to be like focusing. Well, I wouldn't say focusing on that, but like pushing in that direction. It's quite good to do. Yeah, just keep on harvesting. Keep on pushing for the Moais. Where are we at right now? Yeah, 19 out of 46. Victory in nine turns. Uh, we could probably slow down how much investment and like how much we care about Moais. Like we could probably just mash end turn and win pretty quickly. I like to just keep playing. I don't know why. It's just fun to me. Lovely. Petra, plus two food, plus two gold, plus one production, all desert tiles. 
We're loving it. Look at that. We finally got the beautiful Giga, huge, beautiful Petra. Let's go ahead and recruit a great writer. We're going to come over here, builder. Hey, guess what we're going to do? That's right, more Moais and more builders because it's the strategy right now. Why is it the strategy? Because Moais are just really efficient way to generate tourism once you have flight. <laughs> it's that simple, my guy. There really isn't a whole lot of logic to it. It's just really efficient to build Moai. And the cool thing is when you build more Moai, they expand your borders faster. And when you expand your borders faster, you build more Moai. And the faster your borders expand, the more Moai you can build. The more Moai you can build, the faster your borders. It becomes an infinite loop. Oh my God. This is really fun. Um, I'm going to teleport you over to one of my empty amphitheaters because optimizing things is something I have. Not that I've given up on them. It's just I don't care as much as I did. Uh, I'll just plant woods there. That's fine. Moai. Um, I'm going to check now and see if I can move a great work. Yes, I can. I can move a great work over here. And that's what we're going to do. We want our artists to distribute their great works around their empire. And after you create a great work, you can't move it for 10 turns. So you kind of, you're better off like physically teleporting or walking your artists around. It's just, it's just better um, in my recommendation, in my sermonization, in my understanding, in the limited understanding that I have. All right, let's go ahead and start moving all these bad boys down to the south side of my empire, heading down to South Central, drinking, drinking their juice. I don't know why I know that reference. I think I watched a movie. I want to say I watched a movie many, many, many years ago. There's Delicate Arch, beautiful. I don't even know what South Central is. All right, we've got Anchor Watt. It's probably like an LA thing, right? Uh, we've got Democracy. We're going to go ahead and switch to Democracy. And we're going to plug in the coolest card in the game, New Deal. It gives you four housing, two amenities to all cities with at least three specialty districts. We're going to keep liberalism. Um, mostly I'm happy with the setup that we have. I do think there's something to be said for plugging in logistics again to get that movement speed. And then I guess Merger Confederation does give me like a slight boost. I'll do gunboat diplomacy uh, for more envoy shenanigans. Victory in 12 turns. We're loving it. We're on the verge. This moment in Civ, I just want to say, by the way, this is my favorite thing to do in the world. The fact that I get to sit here and just play computer games is honestly just a dream come true. And I love you all for making it real. It's just so, it's so kick ass, dude. I'm loving it. McDonald's style, I guess. Is that a style? Um, I love your mom, McDonald's style. Bop, 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 bop. Woo, yeah. Let's keep on making those moais. Moai, Moai, Moai. Chop, 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 buddy, chop, Dumbledore. Wow, that is an ancient reference that just like re-entered my brain. All right, let's build those Moais. We got those Moais going. Uh, oh, another little Moai over here. Hey, you want a little Moai? Oh, there's a little Moai here. Oh, little Moai here. Oh, little Moai here. A little Moai here. Oh yeah, look at, dude, we are just m m, -m moaiing down our enemies. Uh, we're up to 659 tourism per turn. Uh, a very juicy amount. We've got 24 tourists out of 45. Let's say you measure your victory condition. Um, you go ahead and just... Guess what? I need you to make builders. It's all I care about. Go ahead, Elmo. Dig me up out of facts. Make me some builders. Make me some builders. When it comes to mercenary companies, you should almost always vote production, one vote. This will get you the diplomatic thing. If you want, you can force, force it with a load of favor, but the AI will almost always vote minus 50% cost of production. Um, and again, they most almost always just vote like melee or ranged. If you go one, two, three, you'll guarantee whichever option you choose. So melee should probably pass. There you go. The AI overwhelmingly voted for production with all of their stuff. Actually, a couple of people voted for faith and gold. Rarely that I see that. Rarely that I see that. Um, and then they typically vote for melee. Melee is one of the most, the AI tends to build melee units, so they tend to vote for melee units. Very simple to win both of these, usually. Um, there's professional sports. Uh, I think now is the time. Like, we don't really care about what civics we unlock, so we're just going to click the end of the tech tree. I guess in theory, it would be nice to get environmentalism first because it gives a 25% tourism boost across our entire empire. Um, something we can do to make ourselves win the game slightly faster is get open borders with the AI. This is not necessary for us to win the game. It does give us a 25% tourism boost boost so it will speed up the rate at which we win the game and I can show you that tourism boost if I go to the UI if I swing down over to here I go to the culture screen I hover over to mirrors you can see we're getting a 25% tourism boost for having open borders and let me tell you the goal is being gold we're making gold I don't have anywhere to put great works of music so we'll just be kind of like hanging on to a great musician that I just picked up there um but I do have places to put, you guessed it, Moais. Every single Moai build charge that I crank out is just another step along the pathway of glory. Just another move towards victory. Another stop for the Republic. 
the Republic on the Victory March plantation. Moai. Uh, let's get another... Oh, you guessed it. It's another Moai. Oh, what's over here? Could it be a Moai? Oh, we could put a mine right there. I think this could be a pasture. Oh, this right here. This is a, this is a, this is a chop, chop. And then that, that right there, that's a Moai. Um, what do we do here? We come up there, we push that. We head over this way. We head over this way. We will do a listening post in Scythia because we don't really care about what that guy does. Honestly, he can just do whatever he does. We'll claim a great person, we'll grab Imhotep. We don't really have a use for Imhotep. I guess I could crack out a quick wonder. Taj Mahal, Christo, Hermitage. No, I don't care. It's Builder O'Clock, baby. Let's make sure we're chopping and changing, getting those Moais. Every Moai we build is a slight boost on the tourism train. It's 10 turns until we win. We're almost 700 tourism in and it's happening, boys and girls. We are almost there. You go there, chop that. Boom, Moai, Moai, Moai there, Moai there. We definitely want a Moai here. You want to chop that and then you want a Moai. Moai. You basically converted our entire empire into Easter Island, which I think is, you know, questionable. <laughs> questionable is probably the word I would use there. Uh, questionable feels like the word. Gonna be real with you? Very questionable. Um, but I mean, it seems to be working. That's the thing. And that's, that's honestly, that is the thing. It's the thing. You know, like nothing else matters. It's like that Metallica song, man. Um, let's let's go. It's a me, Mario. Let's keep buying tiles. Uh, remember, these are worth three culture per turn, plus a little bit of culture from adjacency. So, you know, we, we're making it work. Vastaras, buy me a tile. Make it the tilest that you've ever tiled. Bum, 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 bum. And uh, yeah, we got to be on the verge of victory. We are on the verge of victory. Bonjour. Moai. Okay, I think I've talked enough about Moai. <laughs> it's kind of driving me crazy. Here's what you can do. Uh, just start hitting end turn. If you're on playing on PC, you can press shift enter. I don't know how you do that on Switch or console, but I could just hit shift enter here and we'll win the game pretty quickly. We're generating 800 tourism per turn. And so we'll just win by naturally playing. We don't need to optimize it anymore. We're three turns from winning effectively. Tourists are appearing all over my empire um, and it's going swell. So let's just keep mashing the end turn so that we can secure our victory. 36 out of 44 tourists, then it refreshes. 39 out of 45. Uh-huh, okay. Uh, 42 out of 44. So I'm looking either this turn or next turn, we should win the game. And hey, bada bing, bada boom, you won your first game of Prince Civ 6. All you gotta do is kill your neighbors and then go for a tourism victory. I'm hoping this teaches you some fundamental things about Prince. You should be able to, with the information you gain from this episode, beat King on your own. And then I'm gonna teach you how to beat Emperor. Emperor is gonna be next. Emperor is gonna need its own tutorial because the game changes when you switch to Emperor difficulty. But I do think most people should be playing the game at Emperor difficulty. Anyway, I'm gonna call that the end of the episode, the end of the series. We gotta check the total religions founded graph. It's the most important graph of the game, but that's it. Potato McWhiskey out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.